I think to my first service call. No, second service call. First service call was kind of like a paid favor. <sighs> that was a disaster. But we got the system up and running. Thank God no restrictions in the system. I don't even want to talk about it. Anyway, we're going to an existing customer in Valley Stream. They have a central air conditioning system. It's not blowing cold air. Let's go see what's going on. Hi, this is Mike from the Pipe Doctor. Hi, Mike. Hi, I'm at your front door. Oh, I'll go put the dog somewhere else. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> they ain't got no doorbell. Hi. Sorry, Hi, I'm Sherry. Hi, Mike. How are you? Good. So, you need the unit? What's wrong? Okay, so Friday... We, we've had the air conditioner on for a while now. Okay. And it's always cold and fine and happy. So Friday or Thursday, I guess, I come home from work. Hot as hell. It's on. Okay. But hot and just getting hotter. Like we have it set for 66, it's 78. Okay. That, Understood. That's what's going on. Is the filter clean? The filter was changed in the last six months. I and mean, we won't, when, once we started using it. Which side of the house is the unit on? It's over here. So okay, so why don't you turn it on? on. It's on. Let me go oh, you left it on? Yeah. Well, it was off, but apparently last night my son turned it on. Oh, so it's he on now? Like, it's on. Would you like me to shut it And it's cooling? It no. No. Okay. <laughs> Future reference, if your car is not driving well, discontinue driving it. I had it, it off, but well, I just realized. Just saying when it's... Yes, I know. <laughs> okay. So let me go over the key. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. <laughs> gotcha. All good. Did you turn off the thermostat? I just turned it off. Oh. Perfect. And it's right here with your lovely sticker on it. It's an oldie. <laughs> it's been coming here a long time, the pipe doctor. So it's moving air a little. Okay. I, don't know, I don't know how much it usually moves air. So, you know. And it's frozen. But it's not. Yeah, it's just some frozen it's ice. Oh. Because nothing's going that way. Correct. It's cold. So what do we think? Um. For now, it's going to be unplugged, okay. and um, now you're going to have to let it sit. We'll probably come back tomorrow. Um. All right, you saw it, ladies and gentlemen, R22 system, frozen, little airflow coming from the diffusers on the inside of the home. Well, if it's not a dirty filter or a bad blower, they're going to need some Freon R22. Um, off camera, I said, uh, you know, you're probably going to have to replace this system. She goes, all right, how long about does that take? Uh, I was like, maybe a week or two. She goes, okay, not terrible. I was like, you're right, it's only 77 degrees out, right? <laughs> Stay tuned for part two tomorrow. Isn't that remarkable? I fast forward 24 hours to give you part two without any commercial interruption. All right, we're back using my uh, older set of uh, Testo 557s. This one is strictly utilized for R22. It's always best professional practice to use a uh, one manifold per one refrigerant. If you're working on just R410A, you don't need an R22 um, manifold. If you're working on multiple refrigerants, make sure you get multiple manifolds, uh, especially because those refrigerant oils, they're not compatible with one another. So I got some clearly marked R22. Let's open up our low side, open up our high side. 
Hopefully that's not poison ivy. Three leaves. Hope not, that would suck. So we're taking a look at our pressures. Um, even right now, system is not frozen anymore. We have a uh, standing pressure of 102 PSI. Temperature equals pressure, so that equals 60 degrees. Let's go ahead and plug this bad boy in. Steadily. I think it's probably best that we check our airflow at our uh, at our diffusers. Uh, we are slowly climbing up a little bit, but as you can see, uh, the top left that's our evaporator temperature. We're at 14 degrees, so uh, she is uh, definitely undercharged, unless there's an airflow issue or a metering device issue so uh, I doubt that let's pull our disconnect our coil looks kind of healthy but I'm sure it's dirty nonetheless <sighs> old York all right the indoor unit we have an old York we have a plenum Looks like it could be a supply plenum there with the takeoff going that away and return. Flex is kind of decent. And the line set. Replace that. Those drain lines. It goes disappear into the abyss. Alright, so I gave them my spiel. You know, the good, better, best for replacement. And then I also told them there's five things that um, they need to know about when you have a refrigerant uh, leak issue. And there's five things that you can do. And essentially you can, number one, do nothing. Number two, you can add refrigerant. Number three, you could attempt to repair the leak with a sealant. Number four, which is preferred in some cases, uh, perform a leak search and then uh, discuss the repair and or replacement of that component or number five, replace the system. Now, obviously, if you uh, a do nothing approach, it's obviously gonna be a, uh, a very expensive approach because you're gonna have increased operating costs. A system that's low in refrigerant will use more electricity, right? Uh, you're going to have a compressor life that's shortened because the motor is going to work longer at higher temperature. And also, finally, contamination. You know, moisture will enter the system and damage the compressor. So that leads you to why not just add refrigerant? You have to realize that just adding refrigerant, right, is only a temporary remedy. When the replacement refrigerant eventually leaks out, perhaps in a couple hours or days, weeks, months, the system will stop working again. All right, I have my refrigerant scale right there on a level ground. I'm using the, uh, this field piece wireless charging scale uh, synced to the wireless uh, remote. Got my uh, R22 upside down charging as a, uh, as a liquid. I already purged out the air out of the hoses and also purged out my liquid refrigerant out of this line. And with the system off, I'm just adding some refrigerant right now. I know we need a couple pounds. So I'm just gonna add a pound to start and let the pressures possibly stabilize because that tank is not full full anymore. It's probably maybe 40% full. So I'm gonna add about a pound, let the system stabilize, close my high and low valves on my four port manifold. And um, here we go, one pound. Let me close this. Let's close this. 
Okay, let's give that a hot minute to stabilize. And now let's plug her in. Okay, we're gonna watch our pressures. We want them to stabilize. And remember when we were doing this before, we had a, I think a 14 degree evaporator coil. Uh, we wanna be above 30 degrees, generally, sometimes 32. Um, I don't think we have a TXV in there, more likely a fixed orifice, so we could charge with superheat, but I am just going to charge by experience and knowing that we have this three and a half ton system indicated by 42 in the model number. Came factory charge with five pounds, four ounces, and we have roughly a 50 foot line set. So I know at most this probably system takes around six, maybe six and a half pounds. I would have to look at the specifications, but after only a pound, we have a 27, probably a 25 degree evaporator coil. So we're gonna let this sit for a couple minutes, five minutes typically, and let's see how the system performs. So you also may be asking, okay, will a sealant fix the leak? Well, injecting sealants into the system may or may, may, or may not fix the leak, depending on the size, the type, uh, once a sealant is added. Depending on the size, the type of leak, whether it's a component, a coil leak, for example. Uh, but after the sealant is installed, we run the air conditioning system for about a good half hour to an hour minimum. Uh, and if the sealant does fail, you know, that refrigerant that we just added is all going to leak out. Um, when the, and then the system will stop working out. So that's why it's always best, uh, depending on the condition and age of the system, to either number one, which is number four, look for that leak and then talk about ways of making that repair or replacement, or number five, in this case, the system is old. <laughs> you know, old, old, old. Uh, you know, the best option here is to replace the system, which is option number five. All right, so I added uh, two pounds of R22. We are now gonna add uh, Easy Seal. This is a uh, Super Seal. This is the system, uh, sealant that my company likes to use. We are going to connect our vial to our low pressure side, so she's nice and snug. And then I'm gonna hook up my high pressure hose to the uh, inlet side of that vial. Okay. Now that's on there, we are going to close our valve on top of our jug of R22, okay? And the first thing I'm gonna do is that I am gonna take this higher pressure uh, refrigerant and this charging hose, our valve is open. We're gonna open up our low side manifold port, okay? And now I'm gonna open up that valve and you watched it eject through there. Now, I'm gonna slowly crack open our high side and taking that high side pressure and dump it into a low side. I don't really need to because all of that uh, sealant with the ultraviolet dye has already been injected. Now, to maximize the loss of refrigerant on the system, we're gonna close our high pressure hose valve and we're gonna open up our high pressure. Our low pressure is already open from before, right? and everything now is open. So eventually, in a few seconds, that low side pressure is equal across my low hose, high hose, and my charging hose. All right, now I've re reinstalled the service port caps on my high and low side service ports. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, these caps are your first line of defense against any leaks in the refrigeration cycle. You know, I, 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 some people are just mind boggling. Uh, ended up adding two point, bug, 2.35 pounds of R22, virgin R22, by the way. Um, customer comes over, he goes, uh, let's add that seal you talked about. And I was like, okay, no problem, $185 later, boom. <coughs> then he goes, what does the new system cost? I was like, well, you know, you're, you know, starting in the teens, low teens, and you go to the low 20s, mid 20s. Yeah, I'm not bullshitting, you know. I don't put in garbage. So if I go with a, a Bosch, a light Bosch, 
you know, you're going to be in the, in the, uh, like, low teen range. <coughs> Excuse me. Installed. <coughs> An upgrade from that would be the IDS uh, Premium. And then if they really want to go balls in, carry Infinity. So we go through all of that. And he goes, you know what? These, these are heat pumps, right? And I'm like, well, your second and third option are heat pumps. So if you're thinking about going solar, and he goes, Mike, <laughs> like you're reading my mind. I'm like, no. <laughs> but if, you think, if you're going to go solar, you know, or planning on it, it's a no-brainer because you could theoretically, you know, net zero, you know, energy consumption for, for heating and probably cooling. I look at his roof, got a big roof, no, uh, no trees, so full exposure to the sun. And um, he signs up for a Bosch, baby. Premium IDS 2.0. Um, still charge them for the refrigerant, though. All right, guys. If you would like that, uh, that list, I have this five things uh, disclaimer printout that my customers sign when we uh, are dealing with a refrigerant link. If you would like that PDF, um, there's a link down in the description box down below. I'll open up my uh, Google Drive. Uh, make that link public for anyone to download and uh it's great you know listen if you're in the hvac industry and you're adding refrigerant or you're dealing with a low refrigerant condition on a system that you're working with right you need to cover your bases you need to protect yourself and you need to make sure that the the end user the consumer the customer is fully aware and educated on paper with a signature um of what the deal is Right? If you don't do that, you're setting yourself up for a possible liability. Come on, Mr. Lucid. Let's go. Don't look at me like that. Fucking drive, bitch.